All right, today we're going to be doing a carb clean and rebuild on a 1985 Virago Yamaha 750. Now this has got obviously the two carburetors here. They're almost identical inside, so we're just gonna take apart one carburetor, uh, but we'll be going through it and kind of explaining everything about it. These right here will go um, connect to your air box. Here as a, it's a vent, and what happens here if you, if you watch, if your diaphragm up top here is in the correct position, if you blow compressed air, in there your slide and your needle will slide up. Now if it's not sliding freely or not going back down properly or not going up at all then you've obviously got damage up here or debris stuck on the slide here your needle stuck down in there. So you want to make sure first of all both sides you blow in here to, to um, have that other side slide up and make sure those are in the correct position. The other thing is sinking your carburetors. Now you've got butterflies one on this side one on the other side and your your throttle cable, if you turn your throttle cable or pull your throttle cable, that's going to lift both of those up. Now if they're not, if they're not sliding freely, you want to disassemble that, clean that all out, make sure it slides uh, freely, the butterflies there. They're both uh, opening at the same time. They should be. If they're not, you want to go ahead and take this, loosen up this lock nut here and tighten this up till, or loosen it depending on what you need to do so they're both opening and closing at the same time. We've got your idle adjust here, and that is essentially just, you can, you can use your, your fingers here to, to turn it counterclockwise, counterclockwise to uh, lower your idle or clockwise to raise your idle. And all that is doing is opening your butterflies uh, a little bit farther. Your throttle cable does the same thing. You pull up your throttle cable, you twist your throttle, it's gonna pull up, that's gonna open your butterfly. That's gonna cause more air to flow through here. Opening these is gonna let more fuel through. It's gonna suck more fuel through. And um, it all just kind of works together. So we've got, um, well, we'll pull the, pull the bottom bowl off first. And we'll do it on this carburetor here. This is the one with the idle side. So not that it, not that it really matters, but. Um, bend this around here so it sits a little flatter so you're able to see it. We've got four Phillips screws um, to pull to pull this bowl off. Now this is your overflow nipple here. You want to make sure you've got a vent line going down underneath of your motor. If you don't, your fuel um, leaking out, going, to, going, going over a bumpy road, putting on a trailer, hauling it somewhere, that fuel is going to dump directly onto your motor and um, discolor your motor or if your bike's hot, could potentially light a fire. So you want to be really careful. Make sure that you've got a uh, vent hose on that that goes underneath the motor. Now these here, this is sealed. This bowl is sealed with an O-ring. You want to inspect that O-ring really good. We'll show you where that's at, but you don't have to crank on these. A lot of times, if these carburetors have been apart before, a lot of people will just crank on them. It makes it very difficult for the next person to pull apart. And uh, if that O-ring is good, hasn't uh, dried out then you don't need to crank on it. So flip that over there then and we've got your um, Your float here, which is this and then we've got your needle and your seat underneath there And I'll pull those out so you can see that there But we've got your main jet here and we'll pull that apart and look at it as well You've got a pin that runs through here and a lot of times these stick if, if this carburetor is gummed up or it's just not in very good condition. Sometimes these pins will stick you. I'm very careful pulling this out, putting any kind of pressure on these posts at all. These are aluminum posts here, and they break very easily. Once those, once those posts break, you just throw your carburetor away, carburetor away because, um, because you can't replace those. So we've, we're gonna pull your float out here. This is an adjustable float here to where if, you're, if your fuel is constantly dripping, um, going down the road or on a trailer, uh, that means your needle and seat here aren't shutting properly. You want to inspect that needle and seat float here. Well, I'll go over how to adjust that quick. Your float's going to sit on this pin here. If you're wanting to um, adjust it, you can take and slightly bend this tab down, up or down, depending on if you're wanting to open or shut it. Now, what that does is when your float, when your bowl fills up with fuel, it will raise your float here. In this case, lower it because our carburetor is upside down and it's gonna shut your needle here into your seat. So it's got a rubber tip on it. It's gonna go down into your, your seat there and shut fuel off. Now, if it's not shutting all the way, then fuel is gonna to continue to dump into your carburetor and go any place that it can, which is 
uh, either your motor or out your bottom, that bottom tab that I showed you there. So you want to make sure that this is shutting. And you can do that by when we, when we put it back together, um, you can hold your carburetor up, put fuel in that um, fuel inlet right here and shut that float and if it shuts the fuel off then it's good. If it doesn't shut the fuel off and it's constantly dripping, you want to either replace your needle and seat or adjust your float there. So we've got your needle and your float off and then we've got your seat right here and you can pull that seat out and replace it um, with a new one and a lot of carb kits will come with a new needle and seat. So we've got your main jet here and take this out and it's got a brass washer underneath this. You want to make sure that that gets put back into place. It's a flat screwdriver that removes that. Now when you're holding this up to light, you want to make sure that you can see through it. If you can't see through it, then it is plugged up. Um, these are pretty good sized jets. You want to make sure that uh, you can see through there freely. Um, a lot of times you have to hold it up to light because they're so small. These are big enough to where you can just see it through it regularly. This does not even go, well that's not true. This is, um, takes my second to largest, well close to the second to largest um, cleaner to get through that. And this is a uh, jet cleaner here. You want to make sure that you can clean through it and it's got ribs on there to kind of clean it out even better. You want to take gum out carbon choke cleaner, spray through it. You can take compressed air, spray through it as well. However, however you want to clean it out, you just want to make sure that you can see through it freely and um, that it's open as much as it should. If you take and stick the smallest uh, cleaner out through there, it's going to make a hole. Uh, it's not going to be big enough. A lot of times you can kind of feel um, when, you're, when you're cleaning out goop or when you're rubbing against that brass uh, jet. So you just want to make sure that you're not, you're not boring that jet out. You want to make sure you're just cleaning the, the goop off of there. So tighten this back down as a brass jet so you don't have to get it extremely tight but you want to snug it up so that when your carburetor is sitting upside down your um, it doesn't walk itself out of there. Next is your air fuel screw and that's here and how you adjust that um, how you measure that is wherever it's set from the factory or um, if it hasn't been set you can run that down till it seats itself so this time half turn one and a half two takes two turns um, to get it to where it needs to be. This air sc fuel screw has got a spring on it and it'll hold itself into place no matter where you put it as long as you're uh, less than three or three turns out, which is generally the case. Check your manual to see where you need to be, but we'll uh, inspect that again. We'll take it back out to where it was. Half turn, one and a half, two turns out. And that's generally uh, about where it needs to be. So we'll put your needle back on there and you just slide that into place there. You can put it on your pin there before you slide it down in there. And it doesn't matter which direction that clip goes on your for that needle. Take and slide this pin all the way through then. And sometimes again like I said they can be a little bit of a challenge. You just want to make sure you don't get too uh, abusive with it. Take, the, take your float then after everything's tightened up, or your bowl here, and slide it back down on there. Make sure this is good. This is a, a gasket, I guess, not an O-ring on this one. But you want to make sure there's no leaks on that. Make sure it's not dry rotting and cracking. And go back together with it. Put your four Phillips screws in. And we'll flip this carburetor over and pull this. bowl off of here. Sorry, I pulled the slide out. Okay, now the top of this here, we've got two of them. They're both just about identical. Again, we've actually got to loosen this one to pull this one off. So we got to pull these three screws so that we can get this one off. So either one of them we can do, but go ahead and remove those. I like to take and I like to put um, pressure on it with my thumb to hold it into place. And I'll show you why here. It's It's got a spring underneath there. More than likely it's not going to go flying off and go all over the place. I just like to hold it there. Keep that diaphragm in place so it doesn't 
uh, rip. We've got a cable holder here. Got all four of those out. I guess we got six of them out. Cable holder here. And that is for your throttle cable. We can pull these off. Now you want to do it slowly because sometimes that diaphragm will stick to the top cap and you don't want to rip that diaphragm pulling it off of there. Now we've got your spring here and your diaphragm and your slide and your needle. And this needle can be adjusted if you've got or if you've got exhaust on your bike or um, different intake, you can adjust this um, needle to a different height. Now, down inside here to adjust this needle, you take an Allen wrench and spin this cap off of here. And it's a plastic cap, so you want to make sure when you put them back together, you don't cross those threads. But pull that off. And that's a little cap there. We've got a spring down in there. And then you can just, well, there's, there's another cap here. This sits this direction. That holds that spring is what that does. And then you can take and just dump your needle out. And there's your needle there. Sometimes these needles are adjustable on different models. This model has um, a needle that's not adjustable, but you can replace it and get a different size. This needle slides right down the center tab there. So we're going to set it right back down in there. Going, going together with it. Take your spring, set it down there. You want to make sure that sits down where it needs to go, so we'll take little pliers, put it in there. If you drop it down there enough times, you might get it into the right spot. Take your cap, set it down in there. That spring will pop right out the center of that. You want to take this cap, and you can set it down in there as well. It'll go right over top of that spring. So you can see there, there's, a, there's an area for that spring to sit right down in there. Take your Allen, tighten that back up. And it doesn't have to be tight, it's plastic threads. So. Now going back together, what I like to do is if you get carbon choke cleaner on this or gas or um, just sitting in, a, in an awkward position, this, this will expand. You want to make sure you set it out maybe in the sun in an area for it to dry out. Now to put it back together, I like to set your diaphragm just like that. I take my two fingers here and you see this tab here, it's going to line up with that there. Now to get this, I'm going to hold that carburetor straight up and down and that's not always going to be the case, but try to set it down in there in a way that um, that needle is going to sit right down into that main jet holder, right down in the center of that carburetor. Once you get that where it needs to be, I take, and I take my finger, hold this up. Put the spring in there. Take this cap and we'll put it on the same direction. It doesn't really matter on this one. But I keep my finger with that slide held up so that my diaphragm does not get slide down in there and, um, and get pinched or fall out of its place. So continue to hold it on there. And I actually will take a couple screws then and put a couple screws in before I, oops, that one has the holder. Before I let go of that diaphragm, because I don't want it to jerk out of place if by letting it slide down. We'll get these four in there. I'll show you how the choke assembly works and your carburetor will be clean on this Virago 700. Still holding that slide up with that diaphragm on it just to keep everything in place. And once you get two in, get too snug, uh, you can let go of that diaphragm. And then a way to check it again, like I said in the beginning, oops, this was supposed to have that on there. In the beginning of the video, um, spray compressed air lightly into here so you don't blow that diaphragm. A blow hole in that diaphragm. So, we're gonna take the screw out. We gotta put this throttle cable holder in there.
All right, then we'll put this cap back on, or the screws back on, but for now, I'll show you the choke assembly. Your choke on this model is gonna be right here, okay? We've got your throttle cable, or your choke cable that comes in here, and it's actually gonna pull this way. So your throttle cable is gonna sit in here, and you've gotta loosen this Phillips screw to pull that choke cable out. It's gonna pull it, and it's gonna pull this plunger open and this plunger here. You wanna make sure that those are both opening. Sometimes what happens is these, because it's got a fork on there, sometimes what happens is these split apart if one choke is um, not, if, if it's stuck. So if that's the case, you wanna bend these back into place. There's pins um, right here on this one and this one. If you need to take those apart, and you can actually do one at a time or just one of them, if just one of them sticking to pull those out, inspect that plunger and clean it out really good. That is a carburetor on a 1985 Virago 700.